Hey everybody, it's Dan, and welcome back to No Cones Garage. On this episode, we're going to do some woodworking, and then we're going to use this angry fellow to try not to turn expensive chromoly tubing into a pretzel. Now that we've got the driver's seat pocket complete, we'll put it in the body and sit down and check for clearances. So what I'm checking for is helmet clearance to the roll to where the roll bar will be to figure out how high the roll bar needs to be, which is required by regulations. Additionally, I'm checking for knee clearance to the dashboard and checking to ensure that I'd have the ability to lift my legs out and pull them up to my hip to get my feet pressed against the seat to get out. Uh, I'm also checking uh, with the steering wheel just to make sure that a comfortable position for the steering can be achieved that offers a decent elbow clearance for where I anticipate the tubes will be. Alright, so I'm trying to locate the furthest back cross car chassis tube. Uh, it's going to be a two inch piece. Um, it's the NHRA cage specs require that you have two inch tube um, I believe it's 083 wall um, at the, the bottom plane of the chassis. Uh, so the, the first big tube is going to go here. Uh, it's 26 inches from the rear axle. Center line to the back, and the front, it's a 2 inch tube, so it's 28. Um, so then I just took a square to figure out where the tube is going to sit. So if I put the tube right up against the body, inside of the body shell, it'll be right there. That's three and three quarter inch in from the edge of the table. Um, obviously I don't want to put a fillet weld of tube right there. So we'll go about a quarter to three eighths wider. Um, so that'll put this line at three and a half. And I went and checked the other side, did the exact same activity, uh, ended up I must have got the body shell centered on the, the table well because it's exactly uh, three and three quarter. And so we'll just put a line at three and a half. And so the, the first, the tube, the main hoop is going to be 42 inches wide. Well, actually, sorry, the main hoop is going to be 41 and a half inches wide. And the first chassis tube will be 42.
One tool you're going to want to keep uh, when you're doing this is a plumb bob. Uh, you can use it to locate, you know, lay it against the body and drop it down to the table. And you just got to kind of wait until it stops spinning and you can put marks, uh, you know, for different areas of the body. Like this line right here is the front edge of the windows. Um, on the model, I had wanted that to be 33 inches from the back. If that's 28, it looks more like it's 31. So it looks like the body's actually about two inches further rearward than what I wanted. So I'm going to check into that and I might end up moving the body forward a couple inches because uh, that's important for the front end to be able to have a long enough front overhang to be able to get the suspension in. And the back I'm extending anyway, so it's, it's less important that the back be exactly on. It's going to support the front suspension so we can get that fabricated. starting at the center, um, coming out, you know, that distance that you need, putting a bend in, then coming down, putting a bend in. Um, so I've clamped this bend on uh, where I want it. I've verified that the top's at zero degrees, so now I'm going to find out what the angle of the bend is going to need to be. So we'll just take a straight edge, push it flush up against the edge of the tube, and then check what the angle is, and it's right about 82 degrees. The main hoop, overall width, so it's going to be 82 degree bends, and then the remaining 8 degrees, and then they're just going to go vertically down. It's going to be overall um, 
40, sorry, 43.75 wide at the out point, at the widest point. Um, and so the, the top, you know, we'll figure that backwards uh, based on finding the center and measuring out to this first line and make the first bend. The bender I'm using is a JD squared Model 3 that I've created my own hydraulic conversion for. Um, I'm using the hydraulic cylinder off my engine hoist. In order to clamp it, I'm just using some two and a half inch exhaust clamps. Just clamped three of those on and fabricated some heavy brackets. It works good. The only issue uh, with it is, is the stroke on the hydraulic cylinder is uh, only long enough to do about 60 degrees. All right, so here I'm marking the tube. Um, I just added the distance to the first bend, um, to the distance to the center of the tube, and I marked it. Um, I like to use just masking tape, uh, just because it's high visibility. Um, here you can see you line the tube up, and you can see how I line the masking tape up with the leading edge of the die, and then secure it using the strap. Um, and you can tighten the the jam nut, um, that's really helpful if you're doing something that's out of plane um, and you need to rotate. Um, it just helps to, to hold the part in position uh, while you set the tension on with the bender. So what I did was I measured from, I, I in essence calculated from the top down, so it's 16 and a half. I use the relief cuts in the garage floor, and I just came down, put it even with the top, and I came down 16 and a half. And then to make sure that it stays in plane, I'll just check this, to make sure that this is level, which it is, because this is adjusted to be the same height as that. So then we just make an 8 degree bend. Now that we got that side done, we put it in place with our template on this side. And you see the line that represents the template is 23 inches. So we just move over to the tube and put a line at 23 inches on the tube. And then we'll start our bend there. going to do it for this episode. We got quite a bit done. We got the driver positioned in the chassis. We placed some main chassis tubes and the big one is we bent up the roll bar. Join me next time as I continue to build the chassis and bend the rest of the roll cage.
Tooth Factory.